Hey, and welcome back to Frequalize This. This is Rich. Uh, it's been a while, uh, but uh, today I'm giving you a review of Stephen Wilson's latest solo album, The Harmony Codex. And this is uh, Wilson's seventh uh, studio album, but more importantly to some, this is his follow-up album to his pandemic release, uh, The Future Bites. And uh, that one was a little controversial, I would say, just because... It was not your typical Wilson record um, in the fact that it was very much uh, keyboard driven instead of a kind of your classic guitar driven uh, uh, prog rock, classic rock kind of uh, atmospheric stuff. Um, and I know I was talking to uh, some of the other guys on this channel, John and Dave, that I would like this album, I would like the Future Bites uh, more than they would when that first came out, and that really hasn't been the case. I really, I do appreciate it more than they do, but I really don't find myself going back to it much just because um, of just there's so much other output that Wilson's put out over the last 30 years that I would rather listen to. So there is uh, a lot writing on this album in a weird way just because, uh, not only because of the follow-up, but also the release of the uh, last Porcupine Tree album, um, Continuum, um, a guy, I can't remember that name, whatever that is, you know what that name is if you, uh, follow, uh, Wilson's career anyway, um, but anyway, um, that was the first uh, album to come out after that Porcupine Tree release, and so we were wondering if that sound would be, uh, stuff that we were accustomed to Wilson doing, and I have to say it really does strike that, uh, Wilson sound. Uh, it is proggy. It's uh, atmospheric. It's um, uh, has a little bit of classic rock influence in there. A lot of great uh, instrumentation. There's a couple of great um, longer songs on there. Um, one song, you know, Impossible Tightrope is the big heavy one with the uh, largest amount of breaks and stuff like that. He brings in uh, uh, Ninette Taeb, um, I probably screw that name up because I kind of like am horrible at names, but um, she's always a welcome voice on his records and she delivers some great stuff here. Um, one thing that really jumped out at me is Wilson seems to be influenced by a lot of the uh, classic prog um, albums that he's uh, spent time uh, remixing and uh, uh, doing uh, audio uh, engineering stuff for, uh, and some of those influences really show up on there. Like the uh, title cut, um, the Harmony Codex is very much like a Tangerine Dream uh, record, and uh, I know he did some work with uh, Tangerine Dreams, like uh, Phaedra, uh, Tangerine Dreams uh, '74 album, and uh, they really have that DNA in there, and just some of these prog uh, moments in there. Um, you know, do seem to uh, be uh, from other bands other than the uh, requisite uh, Pink Floyd uh, influence. You have a little bit of King Crimson in there, for example. Um, you know, and then just some of the, you know, some of the other stuff that he does, he does callbacks to his Porcupine Tree catalog. Uh, the song Actual Brutal Facts has that same kind of uh, voice trick that he's did on albums like Dead Wing and uh, it's, uh, you know, some of his other solo stuff as well. Uh, it's really, really good. Um, it clocks in at about an hour and four minutes. Uh, but there's really no boring uh, dead parts on the album. It's great from first track to last track. It is the kind of album that uh, you would expect from Wilson at the same time. It's not necessarily a carbon copy of uh, some of his harder uh, solo stuff like To the Bone or uh, Hank and I Race. It very is uh, synth driven in some spaces. And, uh, you know, it's much like, you know, some of the stuff that he was doing on the Future Bites, but with more guitar, more hard rock, and much more, um, like I said, just more progressive elements. Um, and I think uh, if you're a Wilson fan, if you're a Porcupine Tree fan, if you like some of his other side projects like Blackfield, um, you will probably dig this album um, as much as I do. I, uh, I can tell you I've already listened to it. It's only been out maybe a month or so, uh, a little bit longer than a month, and I've already listened to it a lot more at this stage than I listened to his last album. So uh, this is great, and I think you will really enjoy it. And uh, 
that's all I have for now. But thank you. Uh, keep tuning in. Uh, like, subscribe, and all that. And uh, we'll see. You in, we'll see you in the future. Bye.